the greatest confusion really is to, to attribute an independent nature to any datum. That's where all confusion originates. When, whenever we believe that anything, that are, any thought, emotion, sensation, any, anything, any place, any person has an independent nature, that it's separate or apart from open intelligence, and that it requires anything at all, uh, that's the basis of all confusion. So it, that makes it very easy to resolve any kind of confusion. Just rest for a short moment and see that it's indivisible from open intelligence, and, and that really clarifies all confusion. And of course, the greatest confusion that we can have around this is that we have an independent nature, and that we somehow need to get back into open intelligence, like due to some wrong wiring in there. Uh, we're, we're somehow apart from nature's intelligence, and then we have all these management strategies to, to connect with the flow of nature's intelligence when all the while it's nature's intelligence thinking that we're disconnected. It's just this one single thought. And then when we, when we clarify that thought of disconnect or of feeling lonely or whatever it is, right there when it arises, when we allow it completely to be as it is and we see it resolves, in and of itself, and all the while there is the obviousness of open intelligence, then that thought can never distress you ever again like it did before. It might still come up and it might not feel as nice as having happy thoughts, but you know instinctively there is nothing wrong with you for having that thought, and there is nothing you can do for that thought to not come back again. You could be in the most romantic candlelight five-star spa resort on the beach and think that you're the loneliest person on earth because it's unpredictable. It could just be the way the other person looks or the waitress comes and she looks prettier than your wife. Or It could be a million things come up and then, and then you think, oh my God, and I shouldn't. Think. You know, then, but it was just a thought. But then you spent the rest of the day or maybe even think about you know, getting a divorce or how you could get together with this other person. Or there can be just so many things that we do. And all the while it was just a single thought that then took us on a whole trip. And so to really clarify the basis of confusion, and then what we find is that we've never been confused. You know, the, the intelligence that is at the basis is always unconfused. It's like a stainless mirror in which all data appear. And even if it's hazy, if, the, if there is smoke or darkness or whatever the mirror reflects, the mirror itself is always crystal clear. And in the same way, our intelligence is always clear. It's always lucid. And it's always beneficial. Nature of the mind is potent benefit. And that, it, I, I, that was not my experience of my mind. I was sure that my mind is, is completely unbeneficial, and if I could give it away, that would be the best. And so that, that was what many of my practices have been, have been built on. Either, either give it away or make it do what I think it should do. And like it was me, and then there was my mind somewhere there, and I could like work on it like you would work on a car or on whatever you're working on. And then, uh, and of course, it never leads anywhere, as we all know, but whatever it is that we try to do. And even the best management strategies, uh, there are still management strategies, like you can try and manage yourself, and if you do that, then you will try and manage all your employees, you'll manage all your team, and it's just a constant constant effort to manage all appearances and try to shape them into something that we then can approve now, now it's good. And it never gets that approval. There's always something wrong with something. And the simple basis is that there is always something wrong with you. So, <laughs> and, and since we're never complete, nothing else is ever complete. So in, in each short moment, we just cut that. 
just cut it completely. There is nothing wrong. And even if you think there is something wrong and then you relax deeply, you can see that even that is the shining forth of beneficial potency. And when w what I saw, and that was just such a gradual process, such a gradual process that I cannot even say this is where it happened or then I, I woke up and then suddenly it was completely different. It, it was more that when I looked back, I could see there has been a very gradual shift in the way I perceive myself, that now I cannot find something anymore that used to be there all the time. And I, I have found complete assurance in the responsiveness of this intelligence, where I don't need rule books anymore and say, okay, uh, if somebody asks me this, I need to respond that, or if somebody feels sad, I must not laugh. I need to look really serious and nod and you know, look a little gloomy and because otherwise the person might think I don't take them serious. And it's such a relief to see that we don't need to do any of that. But just by relaxing, we know exactly how to respond. And it's so expanded my perspective of what compassion, for example, is. I always had this image of somebody living in austerity, never being really happy, and, and just always being beneficial. And it, it's... It sounded great because I, I knew that there is something about every human being that wants to be of benefit. But it, it was so effortful because I never knew what is beneficial. Like ultimately, even if you think about it a little bit, you never know what will happen in the future. So how can you be of benefit by trying to figure out? We, we never know what the next moment brings. But in the alignment with open intelligence, with nature's intelligence, just like the sun can shine effortlessly and the clouds bring the rain effortlessly and all of this happens without contrivance, we always know just by aligning ourselves. And then there can be peaceful means and wrathful means and funny means and other kinds of means, skillful means to connect and be of benefit. And all of this, as, as you all know, it all comes about by really clarifying the nature of, of the date and whatever it is in that moment that's, that seems like it's bothering us. And then it, it becomes so much fun to really see these afflictive states because that's, that's where so much power has been. At least in, in my case, I can see that I, I have become quite good with conventional means of controlling my afflictive states. But it was so much work and also very de-energizing, because the result always had to be that the energy of the afflictive state somehow goes away. So it was much more like neutralizing the energy, and then being able to relax a little bit, and then over time what just happened is that all this energy of the afflictive states, it can just rage, but it's going directly laser-like into beneficial qualities and activities. So where, where uh, worrying or concern is just when it's expanded into the vast mind where worry and concern aren't really the labels. It's just really the heart connection that you have with other people. You care so much about the people who come today. And just that care that spontaneously arises in you is the connection. And so you're, you're docked in, you're plugged in. And, you know, the words will just do whatever they do. But, but what's really felt in an interaction isn't the word. Then they could read a book. What they're interested in is you and meeting you. And in the same way, we, we can apply that to any business situation, to any family situation. And like, like Kati said, the, the lifestyle choices. I'd much rather have a business with, with one employee <laughs> uh, rather than have a business with a hundred employees where I just don't want to go. And then, of course, there are businesses where, where we have a certain responsibility and then where we can bring this insight that we have from just being with ourselves and being in an environment like this and then bring that into the situation just by relaxing deeply. So it, it, you cannot use like a, a carbon copy and just say this is how you need to do it, like never go in a work situation anymore uh, without the mainstays. That would be an extreme. 
but uh, just expand the scope and um, see what's possible for you in that situation. And I just know a little bit, of course, about your situation. And there, there could be many ways of how a business can be grown by including other people because the skills can be learned quickly if someone has an open mind. Whereas for somebody who, who, uh, who is, say, an expert in, in marketing or whatever you'd be looking for, to possibly or maybe become interested in the mainstays that may or may not happen. So if you hire people hoping that maybe they get interested in the mainstays, that, that might not work out. And so to just really see what is of most benefit in, in that moment, how you want to proceed. And then the principles of benefit, which many of you are involved in. It's amazing to see with like this whole center is run by just so little um, rules. It's all run by everybody relying on open intelligence. So that's the greatest asset any company can have is training, especially training the executives who then like form the culture of, of the organization by building teams, by hiring new people. So if, if the board, if the executives are really behind open intelligence as the, as the platform and then hold everybody to account in, in the same way as we hold ourselves to account to use our mind, to use our speech, to use our body in a beneficial way. And we demonstrate that. We ask people how they're doing and we really mean it. We, we see their strengths, gifts and talents and, and we give them tasks that, that are just perfect for that to expand a little bit. Just it might seem a little too much, but it still looks doable. And just whatever, whatever we have seen, how we are um, embedded into this culture here at the center or in other projects in Balanced View.